Now something I found real interesting. I decided to test them just for grins and giggles. Is LEDs. I know that they use different semiconductor material for each type of LED because it emits different bandwidth of light. So I decided to test red, green, yellow, and blue or white LEDs. I found an interesting result. I'll first test the green LED at 37 kilohertz. Oops. Backwards. Interestingly, interestingly enough, you run at 37 kilohertz, no noticeable knee, so I start turning up the frequency, 80, 100, 140, 150, 180. Yeah, you can just start to see your knee around 180, turn it up 200. Yeah, noticeable knee at around 200 kilohertz. So it's a pretty decent speed recovery diode. Of course it wouldn't work as a power diode or a power supply diode for a switching power supply, but because the peak inverse voltage sucks on an LED, but as far as recovery time on a diode, green LED, they are pretty respectable. Now, I'll try a yellow LED. This is at still 200 kilohertz. And no noticeable knee at all, even at 200 plus kilohertz so there doesn't seem to be hardly any noticeable recovery time into the lower uh, low RF range so that's was a surprise and then I'll try a red diode Okay, going out. Hook it up. Red diode. Again, relatively good recovery time. And that's surprising, so I think I'll go to a slightly faster go to square wave set up here in a minute and uh, try to show that in a bit different fashion here because I'm kind of surprised that the recovery speed of a LED or at, or at least the red and the yellow LEDs I'll try a white LED here for the Fun of it, I think I have one here. That's an infrared LED. That has a pretty horrible recovery time. Now the next one. Yeah, that's a white LED. Now it's backwards, but look at that. Forward. 
Uh, seems to be considerable capacitance or whatever in it. At 200 kilohertz, it shows a relatively respectable recovery, but a lot of capacitance. All right, I'll go to the square wave test here. Take it off the XYZ mode. Go to the square wave. In the square wave test, high frequency test, we're going to have the uh, function generator directly going to the lo uh, diode under test. Diode will be right here. Downstream of the diode will be going to the load resistor. And across the load resistor is the wire cable going to the channel A of the oscilloscope and the oscilloscope a normal sweep function for this, uh, for this te next test. This here is a continuation of the test of red LED emitting diode at higher frequencies, turn up the intensity a bit on the display, and I'm going to be testing the diode as a rectifier for a very high frequency signal, uh, well, high frequency signal about 1 megahertz, 1 megahertz square wave, that's with the leads directly connected. Now I'll put a germanium diode in place for a reference. You can see the output whenever it goes positive. Diode goes in conduction. Now I reverse conduction. Normal RF signal diode. Now we'll test a red LED at 1 megahertz. Pretty respectable. Pretty respectable for an RF detector. Let's see here. Move it back. Yeah. No undershoot. Nothing. Good. Relatively good. Clean. Rectified signal. If we go to sine wave, we'll see what it looks like. And go back to the germanium diode for reference. Reference germanium diode at 1 megahertz sine wave. Then back to the red LED. We'll try a yellow LED here. Yellow LED. Relatively respectable too. Now for a bit of a demonstration we'll try a traditional Silicon diode, one amp power rectifier diode, one in four zero zero five. In the same situation, well, it's pretty much full conduction, full cycle, so it doesn't do much good as a power uh, as a RF signal detector which of course it ain't designed to so we'll take go to square wave and see the significant recovery time now we'll take go down to 100 kilohertz reduce the sweep, the sweep rate of the 
oscilloscope a square wave you can see what's conducting during the positive portion and then when it drops to zero and goes to the negative portion of the square wave the diode axis is short and carries through the full negative portion up until the point the charge carriers in the diode are depleted then it turns off and the voltage comes back up to normal or zero volts which is what it should be in a reverse conduction condition so drops down holds until charge carrier depletes and the voltage comes back up to zero now we'll try a shock key diode to illustrate the difference shock key diode no, a, a small shock key diode in this case small signal diode no undershoot no carry through nothing good square clean signal at 88 kilohertz now we'll try a large shock key diode remember the capacitance of the junction will have an effect because it's a large power rectifier you can see when it goes negative Capacitance carries it negative and causes undershoot, but strictly and quickly it starts coming back up the baseline. If I crank up frequency and increase the sweep rate, you'll see there's no negative uh, continuous conduction period before it finally depletes and starts dropping back to zero as soon as it completes uh, the negative transition the capacitor starts discharging that makes up the junction and as I said shock key diode has no recover uh, instantaneous recovery time so on a large shot key power rectifiers there is uh, just the capacitance issue and 3 amp silicon diode again the obvious uh, solid conduction period during the negative portion of the square wave until it hits the release point or the depletion point then it turns loose stops conducting and the voltage starts coming back up to negative